Sometimes we do pick an article which is um, an example of for something, and that that one is um, where is it? Not that one. Yeah, so all model, all model article. Um, so I ask you to identify some things which were not perfect with that paper. So what did you find? There are some obvious English problems, uh, so some, some things are a little bit um, language related. Um, what else was not that great in this article? Yes, it, it's sort of not really loading here. Um, yeah, you can use it. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I don't know why the... I have a cable. I have a cable too. But uh, Mac gets a bit confused if it has both cable and the uh, Wi-Fi. So I just need to make sure... If I... Have the network... So we will turn the Wi-Fi off. Yep. I don't know. It kind of tries to use Eduroam and then if it doesn't work, it sort of doesn't switch to the... Um, okay, so that's the, that's the article. <laughs> so already after re reading the the first few words, you get a bit suspicious. <laughs> um, so uh, there are some problems. What what did you find? Yes. Yes, so the, there is a lot of claims which are just sentences with no references or no motivational arguments. It just kind of has stated some of the uh, point of view without providing ev any evidence that that point of view is correct or providing any references that back backing up those claims. That yep, so if that's right. So most of the references are not scientific references. Those are just references to some pieces of technology, which actually are quite useless in a sense because they don't give you any, any information about what it actually contains or what the limitations are, what the technical capabilities are. They are just sort of uh, um, references to the actual products, but not to the analysis of those products, right? Um, would you use references to products sometimes in your in your writing? You might, but you try to avoid it. You try to provide references to research on those pro on on those products instead of providing references directly to the products. So if you want to reference, say, Google Glass, 
you try to find an analysis of Google Glass or some technical uh, experiments with Google Glass or something which provides some information, not just to reference Google Glass. Uh, you may be discussing a technology yourself. So for example, let's say there is um, Meta Space Glasses. Okay, they just came up yesterday. Uh, they it's a product and nobody did any research on it yet, right? So I may want to say, okay, Google um, Meta Space Glasses product page is this, and then I will go into trouble actually describing what the limitations are myself in the in the article. Then I would reference the product uh, if I can't kind of back up my claims or provide some analysis from other sources. Uh, but the dead list is more like a blog post references, not like a scientific publication reference list, right? Um, what else you didn't like? Yeah. So <laughs> Yeah. So that is completely ad hoc. <laughs> it hasn't been kind of discussed at all uh and it has nothing to do with anything in the article. Um, also, as before, it's sort of a, a statement with no motivation or backing or reference that that actually is uh, the case. So it says augmented books are cheaper to develop than paper books. Why? I mean, what? Why he claims that? He, yeah. And also, you have ebooks. It's like the same thing. And it's easy to read because you don't need to worry about pixels because it's just a little blank. Yeah, exactly. PDF, so. um, I I also didn't like the, the the discussion on standards and it it <laughs> it was really funny to see this um uh, as an example of an image uh, what. <laughs> I mean, Facebook has nothing really to do with images. Uh, of course, yeah, you can post images, but you know, I don't know why Facebook is listed. Wasn't Napster closed down in the nineties? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this table and this discussion is kind of completely bizarre to me, like not clear at all. Um, so, Shell, um, he he wanted to uh, comment on the on the article, but he couldn't come. So he uh, posted um, his comments through. Um, yeah, I don't know whether we will be able to see it, but hopefully we will. So if I, oh yeah. We have to minimize that. Where is the... Where is the article? Yes. So he provided some, um, some suggestions. So in the abstract, he introduces the concept of um, augmented reality and virtual reality. Uh, and you can sort of guess that that is VR and that's an AR. Um, and then virtual continuum. And then there is an acronym which is introduced, which hasn't been discussed, MR. Um, it, it, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right. You will understand, yeah. Yeah, 
And also, if you're doing that, you probably should put AR in brackets around. It, it's, a, it's generally a, a, a good practice not to do acronyms at all in the abstract. Just spell everything full name. Uh, because you don't, you know, abstract is quite compact. You're not saving a lot of space by doing the acronym. And it's sort of more verbose. Um, so be consistent, use the full, like he, he does it for here, for the virtual reality and augmented reality. I don't know why he uses MR instead of just saying mixed reality fully. Um, so that's one small one. Um, then <laughs> there is quite a lot of uh, badness here. So if we... Um, some English problems, uh, unsupported arguments with no, uh, that's what we discussed as well, with no uh, references, uh, no references. Um, an author promised uh, to deeply introduce the technology uh, and he barely touches the surface, right? So as I was saying, um, the, the first sentence says they are intending to deeply introduce something, but they are failing in actually doing that. The, the intentions were not fulfilled. <laughs> so you either did it or you didn't, right? So if, if you did deeply introduce it, you don't say you are intending to do something. You just said you've done it. Because always if you're saying you are intending to do something, it means you actually intended but failed. <laughs> so you didn't do it, right? Um, yeah. Um, so a lot of discussion is superficial. It's kind of uh, using buzzwords and then not discussing anything in particular, right? Uh, it, it, it's, it's not contributing to your understanding of the topic. It's just bringing up some, some buzzwords and that's pretty much it. Um, um, those tools, again, are mentioned and referenced to the product page and no analysis or no discussion is done, right? Don't do that. So if you are doing a comparison of VR tools, there has to be a reason for you to, to do that. So the only, um, you know, the only knowledge you gain from reading that is to understand what they are. So it says, okay, Away 3D and Unity are 3D engines, and then those tools are a modeling tools, and that's it. There is nothing more than this, right? And that's extremely weak, because most of it, for the reader of this paper, will be known um, or easily found, and right? And also Unity is not a 3D engine, it's a 3D modeling program. Yeah, so. exactly. So if, if you're doing any comparison, you have to have some sort of uh, comparison criteria, and you have to provide some something some contribution you have to say how they differ or what the strengths are and why you know why we have so many and that some are commercial some are open source and and so on you you have to have some sort of motivation for doing the synthesis right if you're just doing this then don't do that i mean it it doesn't tell the reader anything really um it's the same with the other one about the um Augmented reality frameworks. Uh, he he just lists them with not doing any anything with them. Um, so there are some English problems, arguments with no evidence, uh, no no um, references. It's it, it, it does read more like a blog post, to, to be honest. It's sort of like, oh, yeah, I have this, I've done a bit of reading and I would like to post something about augmented reality and that's what I sort of know so far. That's great, but that's, you know, that's not enough for the community to benefit from. It's like, by reading this paper, you haven't learned anything new, uh, really. Yeah, that's... That's an important one, but again, a lot of people use that one, um, and he doesn't go into discussion much on that. that. Sentence, MR will include everything, but it's not only. Yeah, yeah. That's everything that you can't do. Yeah. Apple. <laughs> Apple is not MR. <laughs> That's right. So it's sort of un, you know, unscoped um, statements. Um, uh, 
yeah, bringing up the history, that's okay, but that's already in some other references, so you need to do something with it. Um, so the, the reason for you writing something is to either add something to it or compare it to something else or analyze something, but just bringing kind of stuff from other resources, that's not ideal neither. Um, yeah, arguments with no evidence. Um, SW. Yeah, that discussion on uh, on standards, yeah, I, I found it a bit bizarre. Um, and he brings some existing standards for image and video, but that's, you know, what, what what's the relationship to augmented reality? What is it for? No evidence. Yeah, there is, um, yeah, that, that, that statement is also interesting. Uh, can I move that? So VR glasses were an icon for this technology, but they were relegated due to the manufacturing costs. There, there is no evidence that that was the reason actually, and I don't believe that was the reason. Um, so the manufacturing costs for Oculus are such and such, for Meta glasses are such and such, and they, are people willing to pay the manufacturing costs for those type of technologies? I also read an article about Google Glasses where they discussed the why they stopped <coughs> selling it. Yeah. They actually said that they sold the glass for, glasses for twice the price of what yeah. it cost the manufacturing. Yeah, exactly. Product. Yeah, exactly. That's not even close to... They, they were selling them for a thousand bucks and they it, it was not... Yeah, they produced them for 500 and sold them for 1200. Exactly, yeah. Large, right? Exactly, so yeah. So that that's definitely wrong, right? <laughs> you, we know that is a lie. That's not factual truth. And then um, that is true. There there are some issues, but it's not necessary with adoption by people who bought them, because there were people willing to pay twelve hundred and get them, right? Uh, it was more with the adoption by general population who are not using Google Glass, right? They were a little bit offended or against people wearing and recording everything and, and so on. So there, there were some other issues which unfortunately he doesn't go into and those are kind of interesting. But this this um, summary doesn't give justice to what was actually happening. So it's sort of factually wrong. Um, and that's the case with some other things. So that's a, the case with Kinect and... Uh, yeah. Also they aren't really big really because Jack uh, had uh, showed us in uh, Digital forensics class because he had Google glasses and they were like a bit bigger than these. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, so some some of the things here are just wrong and some of the things are unjustified and it is surprisingly bad article. Uh, it looks okay. It looks um, as if it might be interesting and might be kind of worth uh, worth checking and it has been published by you know um, um, Elsevier and it's kind of a proceedings of the uh, conference so the, the point here is that you have to be careful of what you're reading so you have to be critical and you have to be skeptical and you have to analyze what you're reading and don't take it in at the face value because often it it's not right and you you have to develop some sort of uh, uh, skills of of um, distinguishing a good material from poor material I'm not saying you shouldn't read blog posts and I, in fact I actually posted two blog posts for the reading material for the uh, for the uh, so one is a blog post just a blog post which is actually a really good blog post and the other one is uh, sort of um, it's not a blog post but it's kind of like a blog post it's kind of a personal account of, of some sort of commentary on, on the technology right uh, and and those are great they, those are great sources of information and you can learn kind of a lot from it but they are not necessarily um, suitable for scientific publication and I don't believe that 
paper was sufficient for a scientific publication. Um, and even as a blog post, I would thought it would be a bad one uh, because it, it kind of factually is wrong and it doesn't provide enough in-depth analysis of anything uh, to be useful. Um, all right, so that's that one. Um, so did you read the uh, mobile game learning Spanish paper? Who read that one? So what, what do you think about this one?